Now, you know, years ago I wrote a book called uh, Liberalism is a Mental Disorder. And what I want to redefine is, I want to redefine some terms for you because I spent the week teaching you about the difference between liberals and communists, or liberals and radicals, or liberals and progressives. What you have to understand is that communists are not liberals. I mean, I use the phrase liberal this, liberal that, but I'm really referring to communists because the communists have taken over the liberal ideology. Many people listening to this show say, wait a minute, why does he bash me? I'm not a bad person. I believe in many of the things he does. The fact is that liberals have a fine, upright tradition. It's symbolic of great things, which is why the communists or progressives have appropriated the term liberal for their own use. But you see, you have to understand what's happening in this country. Communism is the very opposite of liberalism. Liberalism actually means the increased rights for the citizen, which we all agree upon. I agree on that. A curb on the powers of the central government. I agree with that. Freedom of speech. I agree with that. Freedom of religion. I agree with that. Freedom of the press. I agree with that. But communism means fewer and fewer rights for the private citizen, the curtailment of freedom of speech, the curtailment of freedom of the press, and the curtailment of the worship of God. In communism, the state becomes all-powerful which is the absolute reversal of American liberalism. And make no mistake about it, my friends, communists hate liberalism. That is the genuine liberals of, Amer of America. They denounce liberals, by the way. They do everything they can to destroy real liberals in communist nations. And that is because communists realize that true liberalism is a bitter enemy, a fighter for the things that communism opposes. Now, I will tell you again, the next thing you need to know because I, I spent the early part of the week talking about the roots of Obama in radicalism and he is a naked Marxist as sure as I'm sitting here in my estimation he is far from being a liberal Obama represents to me the end of the arc that was begun in the uh, in the 60s if not sooner and the example on the extreme other side the violent side of communist revolutionaries was the Bader Manhoff gang which I talked about he is certainly not a violent revolutionary. He is the silent type of revolutionary. He's gone within. In the Frankfurt School of Communism, they taught people how to convert a society from within. And he has done that. But again, communists are not progressives. You understand that? They all say that they're in the camp of progress. progress. Communists say that they're progressives. And one of the tenets of communist propaganda is that communism is the latest word in social progress. You hear that? They claim that any other form of government, especially our mere constitutional government, is outmoded, old-fashioned, and antique. They claim communism is the wave of the future. They say that religion is the opium of the masses, and it must be destroyed. They must cast God out of the, uh, of the country. They must get rid of the oppression of Christianity. And they say if you join the Communist Party, you will see progress. And those who do not follow the Communist uh, teachings are reactionaries, fascists, and warmongers. Now, everybody listening to this show wants progress. If you grow soybeans, you want to grow better soy. If you grow corn, you want to grow better corn. If you even have a green lawn, you want to weed out the dandelions and have better grass. If you're a manufacturer, you want to develop a better product. That's normal. That's real progress. But the communists have stolen this idea and have convinced many of you that they're progressives, but the exact opposite is true. Communists are barbarians in modern dress, and they use propaganda today to get what they want. I'll tell you more about this uh, over the next days and weeks on the Savage Nation, but I think what we should do now, Beowulf, is that since I've exposed how communism is not liberalism, and communism is not uh, progressivism, and how many people listen to the show say, you know, I like that guy Savage, but why does he bash me? I'm a liberal. And yet he doesn't understand that I'm actually a decent person and we agree on so many things. That is because you may be a real liberal, but your friends who call themselves progressives are real communists and you don't know it. And I've tried to tell you all week that virtually everything you see going on inside the Obama administration is the furthest thing from, li the farthest thing from liberalism. The takeover of an industry, that's not liberalism, that's communism. Or at the very least, socialism. The attempt to influence talk radio, as we reported yesterday on the show, by having uh, zombie callers call shows like this and how to, how to call shows about the so-called health care scam, that's not liberalism. That's not freedom of speech. I think what we should do right now, Beowulf, is 
is throw some red meat to the left wing and play the piece on the Biden-Manhoff gang from earlier in the week. It's only a few minutes long, and it's worth doing. You have that ready to go? I'd like to play that one, Phil. Please put it up. Play it right now. I take you back in time to the Biden-Manhoff gang in Germany in the 70s. You don't have to actually know who Bider was or who Meinhof was to understand what I'm about to tell you. I'll just tell you in short, the Bider Meinhof gang was a radical left wing group of machine gunners and bombers who attacked the middle class, kidnapped all in the name of peace, justice and love. Now, they supported the uh, Arab cause. They hated Jews in Israel. They claimed they hated Zionism. And not Jews, but of course they hated Jews and Zionism, being the grandchildren or the children of Nazis. They really, they really didn't fall far from the uh, from the tree. Although they posed as leftists who were out for social justice and in favor of the third world and the third world liberation theology. By the way, which Obama was fed for 20 straight years uh, at his church, in his colleges, etc. Liberation theology. Uh, you heard all of that third world liberation theology it's exactly what obama was bred and schooled in and the obama biden monhoff connection is what i want to talk about today so that when we talk about the health care bill which is going to come up over and over again you have to understand how this connects to the radicals going back to the biden monhoff gang who were influenced by the writings of mao zedong and the philosophers associated with what is called the frankfurt school and marxist philosophers such as herbert marcuse now, many of you have heard of Herbert uh, of Saul Alinsky and Bill Ayers, but you may not have heard of Herbert Marcuse. Herbert Marcuse was the founder of the Frankfurt School of Marxist theory. And one of the main ideas of the Frankfurt School was that instead of outright revolution and social disruption, the left would allow society to continue providing goods and services and to defend the nation, while they, the left-wing intellectuals, would take charge of education, manipulate the public with media propaganda, corrupt morality through the entertainment industry, and infiltrate government bureaucracy at all levels. Does it sound familiar? This is exactly what Barack Obama has succeeded in doing. He's not the first, but he certainly should be the last in this long line of Marxist revolutionaries who have been in the White House. I would say Bill Clinton was the first. We also know that Obama's childhood mentor, Frank Marshall Davis, was a member of the Communist Party. We know that Obama admits attending, quote, socialist conferences. We know that Obama admits reading Marxist literature. We know that Obama became a community organizer and uh, came into contact with the Democratic Socialists of America, who then endorsed his campaign for Illinois State Senate. And we know that Obama became friends with William Ayers, a member of the socialist group Students for Democratic Society, which was a violent group, by the way. And yet now Obama has infiltrated government bureaucracy to the highest level of all. The Bider Monhoff gang used violence to try to achieve socialism, and they failed. They were defeated. But Obama was more faithful to Herbert Marcuse and his plan to infiltrate government peacefully. And he has succeeded beyond his wildest dreams. And so that is why I want to talk about Obama and the reverse Robin Hood myth and the health care proposal and the Maoists, Marxists, and other communists known as czars in the administration, and what you can do about it. All right, so there was a teeny little uh, micro-lesson in, in political philosophy. But remember that much of what you hear that is disguised as liberalism is merely double talk. It's the double talk. It's part of a communist deceptive device known as Aesopian language. What is Aesopian language? Nearly everyone listening to the show is familiar with the fables of Aesop, Aesop's fables, such as the fox and the crow and the lion and the mouse. And often the point of the story is not directly stated, but it must be inferred by the reader. This is called a roundabout presentation. Lenin and his associates before 1917, when living in exile, made frequent use of Aesopianism. Much of their propaganda was written in a roundabout and elusive style to pass severe czarist censorship. And so the early communists desired revolution but could not say so. And they had to resort to hints, theoretical discussions, even substituting words, which, though fooled the censor, were understood by the initiated, that is, individuals trained in party termi terminology. 
And so if you read the official history of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union, the Bolsheviks, telling how Bolshevik agitation in St. Petersburg in 1912 was led by Pravda, the communist newspaper, explained that the periodical could not openly call for revolutionary action. That would have been, brought the government down upon them. So hints instead were put into the paper that were understood by the communists were used. You understand? Now what does it have to do with today? It's the very same propaganda techniques being used today by the administration and by the newspapers in America that don't outright call for revolution or social upheaval, but they hint at it. They send out the code words, the hinted code words, such as diversity, such as equality, such as racism, such as social uh, uh, progress. These are all code words for a communist revolution, whether you know it or not. And don't think the people in the newspaper business don't know it. They know it very well. Don't underestimate your enemy, which is all I can tell you. In fact, the first rule of warfare is know thy 